Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome my third secondary students for the second semester of the Rules Online. And today, for your English book, The Traveler 6, we have vocabulary and grammar. So let's get started. Today we will learn uh, three objectives. One, how to use confusing words correctly. Two, practice phrasal verbs with the verb come. And three, to apply the adverbial clauses correctly. So for number one, you remember we have a set of words, they are confusing to us. Maybe two, three, four, sometimes five words, they almost have the same meaning. So we need to know their meanings correctly. They are, almost have the same meaning, but there's still some differences in the context. And also the best way to learn these words is always to go back to the dictionary. Two, then we're going to practice some phrasal verbs with the verb come. So we have come for, come into, come out, come up with, and etc. So every verb with any proposition, we call it a phrasal verb. And once you put a new proposition to the verb, then this proposition changes the meaning completely with the verb. And finally, for number three, we're going to remember the adverbial clauses correctly. We have, you know, half a sentence, we call it a clause. And this clause starts with some adverb. So if it starts with an adverb, we call it adverbial clause. So if you take a look at this uh, little kid to the left, uh, he's confused about some words they, you know, have the same meaning but he cannot pick one so let's start first with the words that are easily confused or easily are confusing to us like if you put a set of words like job work profession career all of these you know four or five words they almost have the same meaning but still each one of them can be used in a different uh, context so let's take the uh, for the beginning the first set of these words and ask the question can you say the difference between these words transfer transmit and transport they all start with the first syllable trans tran trans 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 and you're confused when you see transfer uh, transmit transport these words really confusing and uh, you just, you know, remember uh, that transfer, is it about computer? Oh, I saw this in a computer and uh, uh, to transfer is to send from one place to another. And then, oh, transmit is the same thing, but I think uh, it's related to, uh, you know, TV, channel, space, uh, radio and other things. And transport, you remember transportation, cars, planes, trucks, uh, you know, all these things are really confusing, but we still can use them in a different way. So transfer, so it comes to your mind that when you move somebody or something from one place to another, you either transfer uh, you know, data on a computer, for example, that is something, or somebody, he was transferred to another place, or he was moved, or his job transferred to another uh, job title or another position transmit and you just remember satellites space channels TVs and all these stuff so to transmit is to send a signal from one place to another and transport when it comes to your mind all kinds of you know transportation it is to carry people or goods or things from one place to another either by plane by ship by car by truck and also sometimes by a train so let's put this into practice and complete the sentences using the correct form of a words in a boxes so in the boxes we have transfer transmit and transport and let's put them in the spaces one they're very careful about hygiene so as not to what transfer 
diseases, transmit diseases, or transport diseases from one person to another. Two, this is a question. Will you please tell me how to transfer, how to transmit, how to transport the money to my bank account? Three, there is a bus that will transfer you, transmit you, or transport you to the swimming pool if you like. So of course the first one, they're very careful about hygiene so as not to diseases. Look at diseases from one place to another. So diseases are not sing, you know, signals and they are not goods. So they're very careful about hygiene so as not to transmit diseases from one person to another. So this is why we use hygiene. Two, will you please tell me how to transfer the money to my bank account? And number three, there's a bus that will transport you to the swimming pool if you like. And sometimes transmit and transfer, they overlap too much. The second set of the confusing words is peak, height, and top. The peak of everything, the height of somebody or something, and the top of a mountain or a top of something. So the word peak, which is a noun, and all these words are nouns, the point of highest intensity. It could be value or achievement. So it could be some kind of intensity, it could be a value, or it could be achievement. This is the peak of it, the peak hour, and so on. And the height is about the measurement of how tall somebody is or something is. So this is Burj Khalifa or the Khalifa Tower, which is the highest uh, building or tower in the world. And the top is the highest point of something. That's the top of the earth, which is uh, the top mountain or the highest point of the earth. So also now let's complete the sentences using the correct form of the words in the boxes. We again have in a box peak, height, top. One, it is impossible to get through on the phone at this time of day because it's the peak hour, it's the height hour, or it's the top hour. Of course, it's a peak hour. This is why communication or calling somebody at the peak hour is really a, a big trouble. Two, it takes, me, it takes me only one minute to climb to the height or top floor of a building using the stairs. And finally, three, from this height, you can see the ocean. So, because it's the peak hour, it takes only one minute to, to, to climb the, to the top floor uh, of a building using the stairs. And from this height, you can see the ocean. Now let's jump off to grammar with the phrasal verbs and the verb come with different propositions. So come up with something, come up alone, come out, come on to somebody, come across, come across with something, come down with something, and come in. So to come up with something is to think of an idea or solution. I have come up with a perfect plan for the weekend. He came up with a new way to learn phrasal verbs. Come up alone, happen or usually unexpectedly, something has come up and I must leave. I couldn't go as something came up. Now as for come without, with the proposition out, come out, be published or released for sale. So a new Harry Potter book is coming out. The new album came out last month. To come on to somebody, to flirt with or to try to seduce somebody, he's always coming on to girls, isn't he? She tried to come up on to me, but I blanked her. Come across to give the impression of being this way. So she comes across rude, but she's actually nice. 
he came across as a lovely guy when I met him. Now to come across something also, to find something by chance. She came across some old love letters. I came across 20 euros when I was cleaning. And to come down with something is to become sick with something. And it's not serious. Not a serious sick sickness. So I think I'm coming down with the flu. She came down with a chest infection. And finally, to come in, be introduced as litigation or a law. So the smoking ban came in 10 years ago. Water changes are coming in soon in Ireland. So we put two exercises in one, which is confusing and phrasal verbs together. So we have come up with to think of something and to find a solution for something, come into, to inherit. So, uh, God forbid, or la uh, somebody from your family died, so you take his money, and this is called inherit. So, come around, regain consciousness. So, he was in a coma, then he came back, or he came around, or came around. So, let's put this in practice and complete the sentences using the correct form of the words in the boxes. So, we have come up with come into and come around. One, the burglar broke into the house of a man who had recently come up with, come into, come around, a lot of money. Two, Rita fainted as soon as she heard the news and come up with, come into, come around after an hour. Uh, three, has the government come up with any solutions? come into any solutions or come around, come around to uh, any solutions to the economic crisis. So the first one came into a lot of money, it means he found a lot of money, and came round, it means she went back conscious because she got some, you know, she was fainted, she was dizzy. And finally, of course, has the government come up with any solutions to the economic crisis? Now let's watch this video about the clauses of purpose and result and concession, okay? These clauses are started with adverbial clauses, adverbs like in spite of or despite of, although, though, and so on. Let's watch this video, okay, first, and then we'll see how some exercises will do uh, for this uh, video, which are these, okay? Zelda took out a housing loan in order to move to a more affluent area. Affluent means wealthy. And as you can see here, the in order to structure is followed by an infinitive. Uh, you could argue that what we had here was a full infinitive, infinitive plus two with in order, but it's generally um, described as in order to plus infinitive. Let's look at another example. Richard moved to the desert so as to avoid the rat race. Um, again, the infinitive. These two uh, conjunctions have the same meaning. They both show other conjunctions here. So in order that, so that, and so. Einstein or Einstein worked in the patent office in order that he could support his family. So here we're seeing um, the purpose, the purpose of working in the patent op office was so that he could support his family. Um, let's look at another one. William did his homework so that he would be allowed to go to the party. So, same function here. They, could, they are interchangeable. And then finally, Maria worked at the supermarket so she could afford university. This is a slightly uh, simpler version of so now we look at concession here we were looking at surprising contrast now we're going to look at concession concession is a bit different because you actually say one thing in one clause and then contradict or say the opposite in the next clause uh, perhaps we'll just go back to the first case here so he has lots of money we're not saying here that he doesn't have lots of money 
we're saying that he's just not happy. So there's no real contradiction there. But here, we're saying, although I agree with you, I have to disagree with your point about education. So in this clause, I agree. In this clause, all right, here we look at um, despite and in spite of. These are actually prepositions, although that's a fairly technical point because they look like conjunctions. Despite her love of Switzerland, Anna emigrated to Australia. This is, uh, the grammar here is fairly important because what we have here actually is a noun. This is just a determinant, it's just a possess, saying who possesses the love. So it's really love, you know, despite love of Switzerland is really what we're saying here. So this is a, a noun. And so you can understand that after despite we need a noun. Here we have a gerund. Actually, that's not such a good line, so I'll try that again. So here we have a gerund. Gerund is when a verb acts like a noun. So grammatically, you could say that we have a noun here as well. Um, and then despite the fact that what you have here is a noun clause. So this is basically a noun as well. So in each of these cases, we have, oh, I should say that a noun clause is when you have that followed by subject and verb. So that is essentially a noun. So noun, noun, and noun, even though they are in different forms. Um, so the point being, after despite, you want to have a noun. And that goes for in spite of as well. So as we have seen, you can get too many adverbs at the beginning of the sentence, which is despite or in spite of which almost, you know, both of them, they mean the same, no actually, they mean the same. Love of Switzerland, so on and so forth. And As we just have seen, you can say despite, and after despite there's a noun, after despite or in spite of, there's a gerund and any verb with the ing, and also we can have a noun close after all these ad adverbs. So despite of, or in spite of, or despite, they're a little bit different and this is all about this lesson. If we do this in practice and rewrite the sentences starting with the new words given, so you got words given with despite and so that. And we need to do any necessary changes so we can change into uh, adverbial clauses starting with a sentence. So even though Ben was tired, he knew he had to keep running to win the race and we need to fix the sentence and exchange even though, which is an adverbial clause, into despite. You can say despite of, in spite of, whatever you like, you need to fix the meaning of the sentence. John left because he didn't want to see Michael. John left so that he wouldn't see Michael or whatever. So let's start to do number one. Despite being tired, okay, after despite you get something despite being tired or despite the fact that he was tired both is correct ben knew he had to keep running to win the race two john left because he didn't want to see michael john left so that he wouldn't see michael so so far what we've learned today we got a bunch of vocabulary and some confusing words and some phrasal verbs with the uh, uh, verb come and for the grammar, we're talking about clauses of purpose, results, and concession with adverbial clauses like even though, in spite of, despite of, uh, so that, in order to, uh, and also so. These are the references taken from your book, The Traveler 6, and some photos from the clip art of Google. And finally, for more information and lessons, you can visit our website. You can follow us on Twitter, call us on this number for any technical support. And finally, Thank you for watching this and I hope to see you again and assalamu alaikum.